It's been a while since we've done a multi-part tutorial. Now that we've all had a bit of a breather, I thought it might be interesting to dive into data modeling and database manipulation with Mongoose. This is going to eventually lead into another multi-parter where we talk about user authentication, but there's not so much point in talking about that until we can store users. So over the next few weeks, we're going to build a simple web app that allows us to do exactly that. We're going to start simply this week by talking about installing MongoDB. If you're not familiar with MongoDB, well, it's a document-driven database that works a bit differently from relational databases like MySQL or PostgreSQL. This approach has its pros and cons, but for JavaScript developers, MongoDB can be a pretty great platform because its BSON data structure looks and behaves almost exactly like JSON. And even the database commands themselves look like JavaScript. It makes picking up and working with the tool very easy, which is good, since this series isn't titled JS Extremely Long and Tedious Hits. We're not going to cover installing Node.js here. There are too many different ways that people like to do it depending on their OS and approach to development. I'll just say that there's a direct install path available by going to nodejs.org. But there are also ways to do it through the various package managers of your choice. And in fact, there are even version managers that allow you to switch between versions. I recommend just running the latest long-term stable version, which as of this tutorial is 10.16.0. We're also not going to cover installing MongoDB. There are several reasons why, but the two best of them are because it's already well explained on the MongoDB site, and because I don't know what OS you're using. If you're a Mac user, you can check the video description for a link. If you're a Windows user, you can also check the video description for a link. In both cases, it's up to you whether you want to set up Mongo as a service or manually run it each time you work on your project. We could also talk about using Docker, and perhaps we will someday, but not in this tutorial. Once you have MongoDB installed and running, you're going to need a basic Express skeleton. We've covered this multiple times before in this series, so we're not going to retread that ground, but anyone who's new to the experience should head for JS Quick Hits 52 and follow along for a couple tutorials until you have a basic Express instance scaffolded out. However, once you get to this line, change it to this instead. Go ahead and hit enter. By the way, I strongly recommend continuing with that entire Express tutorial before diving into this one, if you're not familiar with Express yet. If you are familiar with Express, then you'll know that we can't work with MongoDB without installing some modules. Specifically, you're going to want to CD to the directory into which you just installed your Express files. And run the following command in your terminal or command prompt. We don't need to install the MongoDB package itself because Mongoose installs it as a dependency. You can verify this by looking into the newly created node modules folder, which now has a bunch of stuff Mongoose requires in it. Bunch of stuff. We're not quite done though, as we need to install the stuff that Express requires to run. So in your Mongo test directory, type npm install. Once you're done with that, start your server, either with npm start, or better, nodemon npm start. Helps if you spell start correctly. We've talked about nodemon several times in the past, but I'll throw in a quick link to its package repo in the description. Assuming your server doesn't throw any errors, you can navigate to localhost port 3000, and you'll see the basic welcome to express page. That's a good place for this tutorial to stop. Not very exciting, I know, but we'll get into the good stuff next week. See you then.